Hello everybody. Today I want us to speak about, um, this, I'm recording actually, a PowerPoint presentation that I give to people attending the PPP Seminar Week, that is Public Private Partnership Seminar Week and uh, organized and sponsored by Howard Idevo Consulting Limited. I will spoke about raising money for your large capital project. My name is Dr. Masharia Waringe and we present Susan Nyabura Jogona from Ustawi Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers of Africa, Ubrika. So we started by talking about the basics of money. We said that money comes from people, the future users of a project. So if you're a project sponsor, you have to think about people first or the users. People will want to use a project based on its utility to them. And future cash flows from utility of the project guarantee that project. So financing is a science of creating money today to pay for utility in the future. Uh, in that uh, seminar, we give examples uh, to illustrate how you bring people in. Two examples, one for modern project financing using um, a fiat currency, that is financing current real estate limited and then a postmodern uh, project financing uh, using a bricker project uh, with example of cryptocurrency we whenever we think about a project um, we have to know that project finance go through multiple stages uh, there is the design phase the development phase implementation phase and exit phase uh, where we do community building. Now, the financing strategies for each of these phases differ substantially, and but the key at the center of all that is the human engagement project. Most people uh, here, when they think about projects, they think they are talking about just the project itself and the money, and they never think about the people, the role of the people or the humans who are going to use that project. Projects never succeed if the humans, the human element itself is overlooked from the word go. So today I want us to focus on that. How do you how do you bring how do you bring people to your project so that they can guarantee the future of that project? We shall use both the current estate limited and the Eureka project to illustrate that. Let us start with the current estate limited. By 1931, Baroness Karen von Brixen had realized that it was becoming impossible to carry on with her gone coffee farm. And so her bankers in Europe sent a very young guy called Jean Remy Martin uh, to come to Kenya and arrange the sale of the property. But what happens? Mr. Martin gets here and he finds that the, he's very attracted to the property and he wants to buy it, but he doesn't have money. So what is he going to do? He, he thought about a very, very clever scheme whereby he calculated the amount of money he required to acquire that property and maybe develop a minimum viable project. So the property was going for £4,000 and so then he found he, he thought he would need another 500 pounds extra to develop a minimum viable project which would be a golf course okay so he decided that he would buy the property but he doesn't have money so we went around nairobi looking for people who would buy it who would help him finance it the first thing he did was to convert the 4500 pounds into units uh, debentures each unit costing 150 pounds and then he went around asking people if they would participate and he got 30 people to put in the money and he was able to raise 4500 pounds so he would use the 4000 pounds to pay for the land which as you know it's many many thousands of acres and he used the remainder to, to construct a nine hole golf course. The golf course obviously occupies a very, very small piece of land, just a few acres out of uh, thousands of acres. Now, what this means is that 
um, Mr. Martin did not have to worry about the rest of the land. He just had to worry about building a golf course. And that is exactly what he did. So why would he build a golf course? Golf course would be the project that would eventually support, he would really support for the entire, entire current estate. So how would he pay back the money? Uh, because he didn't have money uh, in the beginning, and then he has taken uh, from each uh, of the 30 individuals. The question is, how shall he return the money? And so, very clever guy, he knows that it's all about people. So he creates a human project. And that human project is what we call now the current country club. Okay, And the current country club then becomes the exit strategy for the current estate limited or the investors in the current estates limited. So how did that work? He formed, or let's say current estate limited because current estate limited is Remy Martin now and the third people who have come in to join him as investors. So they formed a member owned organization known as Current Country Club Limited. That is a second organization that they're forming. Now, Current Estate Limited offers 20 acres for free to build a clubhouse. And then, so out of the thousands of acres, Current Estates Limited gives 20 acres to the new club that they have formed. And then the club would agree to lease the golf course area, golf course area only, okay? maybe 100 acres or so. Golf course area for 35 years, beginning March 31, 1937 at a, a price of 100 shillings per month. So what has happened here? We have Current Estate Limited, which has got 30 investors, and then Current Estate Limited forms a human organization, which is a current country club, and the current country club now is able to engage people, and it has agreed to pay a lease for uh, for 35 years for the golf course alone. The rest of the land is still empty. Mm -hmm. So what you see here, he also throws another in incentive that he's going to provide free water to the greens. Now, why did the why did the 30 people agree to buy the debentures? He promised them life membership into the club. Okay. And then those 30 people became the founder members of the club. And this is the very crafty work of creating a human engagement project. So you had 30 people investing 150 pounds. And because of that, they have become life members of the club. So the club gets founder members. Guess what happens next? The founder members would go out looking for other people. So Remy Martin, his work is really done because now he has a support squad of people who are helping him to develop the property itself. So on July 2nd, in 1937, the 30 debenture holders appointed another 15 members of their families to become members of the club without entrance fee. The 15 members also, now because they have been brought in and they have major incentive to, also, to become a very prestigious club, they bring another 131 people at an entrance fee of 50 shillings per 50 shillings per year for entrance fee of 50 shillings for for men and 30 shillings for women so the 131 become the first members of the club so what you have seen is a is a continuous human engagement program that are bringing people into current country club which is the off taker of the current estate limited See, I hope you're following me, that we have now 131 people in a club and the club itself is going to take off or be become the exit strategy for the, current, for the investors in the current estate limited. One, the current country club has agreed to pay a lease to the current estate limited for 35 years. Okay, that is guaranteed cash flow right there. And then current country club has members and the membership can continue growing and each member is paying a hundred, uh, you know, uh, 
the entrance fee, and then there is annual fees, okay? So as you can see, that's a very clever way of financing a project without, without tears, without paying, without going to the bank to borrow money. So then the newly formed club took over the liability for completion of the building. Now, talking about the clubhouse itself. So uh, all that Remy had to do is build a golf course <laughs> of nine holes. We know that current country club has 18 holes, but that had to come later. But he just had to do a minimum viable product, which is the golf course itself. And the rest of the land going to be eventually owned by the, the members of the club who would like to participate in buying a very, very prestigious um, um, real estate uh, that is current, uh, the, the current area right now. So the members of the club now guarantee that there is going continuous cash flow for current estates limited and the, the, the original investors, those that invested become life members and then there's a takeoff and you can see how they made money for the rest of that. Okay. So the golf course opened officially on the 23rd of October 1937. In 1938, the club raised its entrance fee to 100 for gentlemen and 64 ladies and annual subscription were set at 120 and 90 shillings respectively. So you can see there's annual, there are three sources of revenue. There is the lease agreement, okay? There is the member, the member fees, and then there's subscription fee, okay? So today the club is a family-oriented country club with over 4,000 members, and that is a great success. So what lesson do we learn from Remy Martin about financing your large capital project? Lesson number one. First, find out the total amount of money you need to raise to acquire the property, okay? And so he needed 4,000 pounds. And then design the minimum viable elements of the project, in this case, a nine hole golf course. Then convert the money needed into small units, like shares, stocks, bonds, ventures. In this case, 30 units, each going for 150 pounds per unit. Then find individuals who can buy the units. Then he found 30 people. And then human structure to accommodate future users. And so uh, he created current country club limited and give them offers. He gave them 20 acres. He, he gave, um, uh, he onboarded early investors as life owners, so create incentives and rewards so that people will support your project and when you create that ownership 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 into the club then those new owners are going to help you build the club and finance it they are going to help you finance your project because what they're going to do is they bring other people as you saw here the the 30 people brought another 15 family members and then the 15 family members brought 131 people and then you know that the project is good to go okay so that is how you finance a project uh, without paying bring people into the project so now i want to uh, show you or illustrate again another case you bring a project to to illustrate to you how we can use cryptocurrency to fund uh, to create a human project that can, can guarantee financing for a, a large capital project. Ubrica, the Ubrica project. Ubrica stands for Ustawi Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers of Africa. I am the chief executive and president of Ubrica and we are a life science and health production organization. And we sponsor investments in life science comprising pharmaceuticals and medical devices, and fully integrated health production by building sustainable One Health communities involving people cooperating in retail network combined with health delivery system. And of course, then we also create a sponsor specialized real estate for life science and global health production. Okay, how do we use postmodern financing with cryptocurrency? Uh, for building crypto economics based on a blockchain protocol. 
our cryptocurrency is Ubricoin, and Ubricoin is also um, a distributed application uh, of built-on blockchain for building uh, crypto economics similar to what Remy Martin did. So if I went back to, if I were to go to Remy Martin and draw a comparison, um, current country club itself creates an, econo an economy on its own. In those days, we did not call that economy crypto economics because it was based on fiat currency, but you can see an economy arising from current country club itself uh, because you have users, you have people getting rewards and stuff like that. And we're going to see how the two, um, the two types of financing, both modern and, and postmodern, I'll call it instruct how um, to, to illustrate how you, you bring people in and create an ecosystem for crypto, crypto economics to build a sustainable organization. Um, the Ubrica project financing approach is structurally similar to current estates limited. We have Ubrica project itself, and we have inside that we have projects, and then we would have money. Um, but instead of having fiat currency, where here we would put money, we have crypto economics with smart contracts, and then we build incentives for excellence in that. Our human engaged program, program is um, engineered by Soko Janja, which is the um, the technology for building sustainable One Health communities. And the projects themselves, we have three of them. One is the clinical centers, uh, Ubrika Science Technology Parks, and uh, Ubrika Biomedical Industrial City. And all these are proposed projects, okay? So let's start with our human engagement project. Our human engagement pillar involves engaging people at their basic level of existence to discover how we can work with them to create wealth. Members engage, uh, will enter into a distributed autonomous organization known as a DAO. And this DAO is Corporate Society of Africans. We have created an online retail store, Soko Janja itself, to where members can buy and sell products, products, and services. And Soko Janja becomes the fundamental technology for driving local economies in the village. Now, the URCC or the Ubrica Retail Clinical Center is the physical element of the, <coughs> for building sustainable One Health community. And as you see, we have a sustainable, I mean, uh, in a sustainable One Health com community comprises several components. One, we have to have a clinic, a medical clinic, or maybe a health center, but the health center itself <clears throat> does not produce health if people don't have money. Now, we ask ourselves, how do people make money or how do, we, do they create money? By selling their things in a retail system. And the retail system, as you just seen, is a so called judger itself. Now, <clears throat> people cannot sell anything, just anything, because we need to have these things packaged properly and improved in value, it's called value addition, through a cooperative workshop. So we enroll people into this distributed autonomous organization um, and this, that organization creates cooperative workshops for improving value and quality and packaging of local produce and products. We can also be put in a retail system. And so we can have a, um, the retail system itself and cooperative workshop adjacent to a clinic and the members of the Cooperative Society of Ubricans all together become sustainable One Health community. Okay, We intend to construct at least 100 health centers that will be leased to qualifying health professionals on a 20-year mortgage agreement. So we have already started the work of getting people enrolled into the Cooperative Society of Ubricans and people into the retail system that is Soko Janja and listing their products and produce and services and that is really happening and going on. Then <clears throat> we will facilitate design development and implementation of 66 science and technology parks for universities. A science and technology park is, an, is a real estate project that sits next to the university that helps uh, to create possibility for commercialization. Let's say translation and, uh, 
and distribution of products of scientific work that is happening in the universities. So the, we have 66 universities in Kenya and none of them have a science and technology park. So with the Ubrick project now helps us to uh, create financing for those. And of course, uh, the human engagement project here involves working closely with people in the universities, whether they are researchers, scientists, professors, lecturers, the students, to come on board and get up uh, to uh, translate and commercialize their scientific knowledge to products that can, people can use to solve problems of their everyday life. Then finally, this the final project is uh, to implement a biomedical industrial city in Kenya known as Ubrika One. Ubrika One project is planned and designed to meet full range of health needs, including curative preventive services of those and work in the medical city, as well as those visiting the city for medical tourism and <clears throat> for other purposes. So Ubrika One Biomedical City, it's an all-inclusive development with multiple land uses, which will include high-tech research districts, <clears throat> that means um, medical districts, then we have hospitality district, and of course, uh, rural zones for agricultural uh, research and education. Uh, we <clears throat> The Biomed City is designed to meet the needs of humans, animals, environment, and the economy. That means how to help people generate money, and as well, it becomes a sustainable One Health community. So how do we finance all that? And how do we bring the people in to the Human Engagement Project? We have created 10 billion cryptos, or 10 billion coins, crypto coins, and the job of this 10 billion Ubrick coin is to create an ecosystem for users. So we start creating utility right away. And this is how the Ubrick coin is distributed. One billion, that's 10% of the Ubrick coins, will be used for design, development, and management and scaling of Soko Janja. As you know, Soko Janja is already <clears throat> online, but it cannot be successful if we do not uh, help it to have funds. And <clears throat> the goal of the funds, or the uses of the funds include designing Sokojanja. Designing means bringing in a lot of young guys to be employed as workers. And then we develop Sokojanja becomes um, an internet-based or e-commerce-based uh, uh, retail store that can reach the village. That means with 1 billion Ubi coins, we will be able to uh, create a huge human resource, almost going to about 7,000 employees to work all the way down to the village. Okay. Well, the, we're not talking necessarily direct employees, 7,000 participants, 7,000 users in uh, Direct, directly helping people to register their products on Soko Janja. So we intend to have 7,000 direct users that we know who are working in communities, and we call these community economic development workers, who are participating in helping people in the villages to put, um, to register their products, products and services onto Soko Janja. And so managing that and scaling it requires uh, about a billion pounds. And then we shall set aside two billion, or we have set aside two billion Ubrick coins for design, development, construction management for Ubrick retail clinical centers. And we have said that we intend to have a hundred uh, retail clinical centers maybe two or three in every county in Kenya, we have 47 counties, and that way we shall be able to reach um, everyone in every village to gain access to health services at the retail clinical centers, because as you saw, a uh, retail clinical center has got a retail store, but also it has a medical clinic or health center. Now, in addition, we shall have a billion, uh, no, 2 billion uh, UBNs so or UBCoins for design, development, construction, and management of 
Science and Technology Park <coughs> with adjacent to 66 universities in Kenya. And then we have set aside 3 billion Ubri coins for design, development, construction, and management of the biomedical industrial setting, and 2 billion for community development, that is what we call marketing, to build communities and to build Ubrika team of a lot of workers who can reach down to the last village in the country. Okay. Now, uh, questions that came up during the Q&A answer at uh, the Q&A session at um, the PPP seminar dinner on Tuesday were, how do I participate? If for you to participate in this, we need to put you on a white list. And in order for you to be white listed, you need to create an Ethereum wallet. Uh, to create an Ethereum wallet, go to the website which is indicated here and make sure very, very careful that you write this e address S exactly as it is written here. So https slash slash www.myetherwallet.com https colon slash slash myetherwallet.com https colon slash slash www.myetherwallet.com and then once you create your wallet you're going to get an ethereum address and or your wallet address and ethereum wallet address and take that what is a is a large number is a large um, address which combines numbers and symbols and and letters. Send it to info at .com and uh, say that I would like to be white listed. That is how it is done. Let's talk about uh, why you would participate in creating the um, in a human project. We what is human say from the cryptocurrency perspective using the Ethereum platform, we are able to build a lot of incentives. Either on Sokojanja, we have incentives for good behavior, we have incentives for use of Ubri coins on Sokojanja that you get rewards. We have incentives for health risk pooling. We have built a health risk pooling structure, which is a smart contract that operates similarly to a health insurance uh, product program. And the smart contract, when in you, you, you participate in, in your Bitcoin, your smart contract gets pulled with a, a, a lot of other smart contracts to create a pooled risk fund for paying for your medical services. And so <clears throat> it's going to be very easy going in the future, and you see the future of the crypto world, that shopping or doing good is going to pay for your health insurance. Selling your things at Sokojanja, the Ubricoin sets aside money that then uh, helps you to access medical services without paying directly out of pocket. And at the University Science and Technology Park, we create incentives for excellence in academic teaching, excellence in research, excellence in translation, and excellence in commercialization. And this, um, incentives all go all the way down to primary school level and we'll create another video explaining the incentive program uh, for funding education in developing countries using Ibricon. It's possible to build that and then at the biomedical industrial city uh, you create you earn points and rewards for using medical city services. So, so what we learned is that projects are about people. Projects are about humans, projects are about money. Major mistake we do is to design a project and then you go after the money from third parties. And that doesn't help because money is, is not the point. Money is comes from people and you are not going to get money if you don't have people in your project. People actually guarantee uh, the exit strategy or the financing for your project. Think of how your project engages people as owners and people themselves will guarantee its funding. So as a, as a project sponsor, your main job is, is about building community of users.
building community of users. When you build community of users, then you have a project and it's quite easy to finance. Now, someone asked me, how do you know who to target as users? PPP uh, seminar dinner, and I said, um, target population. How do you know the target population for your project? And I think that's quite easy. Depends on what to do with your project. Let's take example of Remy Martin. When Remy came here, he was going to sell a coffee farm. Okay, Gong, you know, Karen was a coffee farmer in the Gong Hills, you know, where the Karen is today. And so he could have thought about continuing producing coffee, or he could have thought about something different. So when he thought about a uh, Karen itself, the coffee plantation. He was inspired by the idea of creating a high-end residential estate. High-end residential estate. But, and this is why I want you to note the cleverness. Um, unlike many people who are creating large, uh, large capital residential projects here in Kenya, Remy Martin himself did not go about selling plots in current, in the real estate. He did not go about selling plots because he knows that plots themselves, you know, like the way our people are buying land and dividing it into small plots, plots themselves will not guarantee the future cash flow of the project. And so saying that you will sell a plot, an individual plot by plot by plot, it's not it, doesn't hack it. Remy knew that people themselves will guarantee that those plots will be sold. So what did he do? He creates a, a club, a country club, which enrolls people. And the people in the country club will eventually buy all those plots. But the first job was not to sell the plots themselves. The first job was to create something that would people into the project, and that's a golf course. And the golf course is now going to be owned by a country club, which is member-based organization. And the golf course attracts people, it creates a, a golf club, and then you have people enrolling there. Now, there's so many people in the current country club who do not play golf, but they come to the club. Now, when current, uh, when, when uh, Remy Martin created the club, he was able to, or to bring on board a captive audience of users. And those captive audience of users, that's community, community of users are the one who eventually will buy the plots. So finding people to buy the plots was simple, simple uh, piece of cake because you already have people entering into the club at a very low price, maybe 100 shillings. They get into the club using 100 shillings and then when they are there, because they are members of the club, of the club, then they don't want anyone else to own the rest of the property, so they will they will work very hard to buy the land itself or the plots. Similarly, in the Ubrika project, we onboard people using the uh, Sokojanja itself, and Sokojanja helps you to sell whatever you produce, and then. It helps to build an ecosystem or community of users for the Eureka project or the Eureka ecosystem. So, if that creates a sense of ownership, and that's what we are talking about, projects first uh, bring people in, and you create a community of users. When you have users, then you know the users themselves will will use that ecosystem as the current uh, country club members now created the, the, they used the, the ecosystem that was created by the club itself to acquire the plots that found the current country club and all the land uh, found users were so As it is today, the land in current is still selling, but you know, uh, Remy Martin did not have to worry about how many plots are going to be sold. He has already, he did not intend to exit his investors through the sale of plots. I hope you can see that. He, he created another vehicle, a special purpose vehicle. The current country club is an exit strategy for his investors. Okay, I hope you get that and that's very, very important. If you don't, you can always um, 
ask questions. I'll, I'll post this on YouTube so that people can see. And so if what we are saying that if for a human engagement project, we don't have as you bring up, we don't have to wait until we have built the biomedical city or the retail clinical centers or the science and technology to create an exit strategy for our investors, but community of users of Sokojanja themselves will uh, create a perfect exit strategy for our investors in other large projects. We can talk more about this online of, on, on, <clears throat> and offline. Uh, you can uh, find us at ubrica.com. That's our website, http slash slash ubrica.com. And for the Ubricoin website itself, http uh, colon slash slash ubricoin.ubrica.com. And email us at info at ubrica.com, info, I-N-F-O at ubrica.com. Or you can find us on WhatsApp at plus 254-780-743-174, plus 254-780-743-174. Thank you so much. And I hope that this helps to clarify some of the issues that came up during the PPC. PPP Seminar Week Dinner. I want to thank uh, Rose Kanano for and all the team at Howard Idaho and all the people participating in the event. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Bye bye.